Descartes' views on the pineal gland as shown in his uh, treatise of man. And maybe I should make this a little bigger so we can read it a little easier. The Treatise of Man. In the Treatise of Man, Descartes did not describe man, but a kind of conceptual models of man, uh, namely creatures created by God, which consist of two ingredients, a body and a soul. These men will be composed as we are of a soul and a body, says Descartes. First, I must describe the body on its own, then the soul again on its own. And finally, I must show how these two natures would have to be joined and united in order to constitute men who resemble us. Okay, so here's the mind-body dualism and the problem of trying to, how do these two things, how are they supposed to connect up? What do you mean by these two things and how are they supposed to connect up? Unfortunately, Descartes did not fulfill all of these promises. He discussed only the body and said almost nothing about the soul and its interaction with the body. Okay, so he creates this problem and he never really resolves it. Um, but what we will try to do in this historical survey of modern philosophy is show the way in which people, uh, philosophers, did try to fix this problem. The bodies of Descartes' hypothetical men are nothing but machines. Quote, I suppose the body would be nothing but a statue or a machine made of earth, which God forms with the explicit intention of making it as much as possible like us. The working of these bodies can be explained in pure mechanical terms. Descartes tried to show that such a mechanical account can include much more than one might expect because it can provide an explanation of, quote, the digestion of food, the beating of the heart and arteries, the nourishment and growth of the limbs, respiration, walking and sleeping, the reception by the external sense organs of light, sound, smells, taste, heat, and other such qualities, the imparting of the ideas of these qualities in the organ of the common sense and the imagination, the retention or stamping of these ideas in the memory, the internal movements of the appetites and pa passions, and finally, the external movements of all the limbs. In scholastic philosophy, these activities were explained by referring to the soul, but Descartes proudly pointed out that he did not have to invoke this notion. Quote, it is not necessary to conceive of this machine as having any vegetative or sensitive soul or other principle of movement in life apart from its blood and its spirits, which are agitated by the heat of the fire burning continuously in its heart. A fire which has the same nature as all the fires that occur in inanimate bodies. So there's a, an Aristotelian problem here. Um, from the way that I presented Aristotle, you know, you can't just have a, a material form that then has motion internal to it uh, that moves on its own like a human being or a dog or even a tree uh, or an acorn that grows into a tree. There has to be something apart from the material nature that makes it grow. This is the Aristotelian thinking. Some other aspect of things. But Descartes wants to say, no, it can all be mechanical. Okay. The pineal gland played an important role in Descartes' account because it was involved in sensation, imagination, memory, and the causation of bodily movements. Unfortunately, however, some of Descartes' basic anatomical and physiological assumptions were totally mistaken, not only by our standards, but also in light of what was already known in his time. It is important to keep this in mind, for otherwise this account cannot be understood. First, Descartes thought that the pineal gland is suspended in the middle of the ventricles. But 
It is not. As Galen had already pointed out, see above, secondly, Descartes uh, thought that the pineal gland is full of animal spirits brought to it by many small arteries which surround it. But as Galen had already pointed out, the gland is surrounded by veins rather than arteries. Um, and uh, third, so, so the, the blood is moving away, not to uh, the, the uh, pineal gland. Uh, but what does Descartes mean by animal spirits? Okay, that's, that's something uh, I think this article does um, clarify later on. Third, Descartes described these animal spirits, okay, as a very fine wind or rather a very lively and pure flame. So something that's really ephemeral, that's almost not there, but is there physically and materially, just barely. It's a very fine substance. And, and as a certain very fine air or wind, he thought that they inflate the ventricles just like the sails of a ship are inflated by the wind. But as we have mentioned, a century earlier, Massa had already discovered that the ventricles are filled with liquid rather than an air-like substance. Okay. In Descartes' description of the role of the pineal gland, the pattern in which the animal spirits flow from the pineal gland was the crucial notion. He explained perception as follows. The nerves are hollow tubes filled with animal spirits. They also contain certain small fibers or threads which stretch from one end to the other. These fibers connect the sense organs with certain small valves in the walls of the ventricles of the brain. When the sensory organs are stimulated, parts of them are set in motion. These parts then begin to pull on the small fibers in the nerves with the result that the valves with which these fibers are connected are pulled open, some of the animal spirits in the pressurized ventricles of the brain escape, and because nature abhors a vacuum, a low pressure image of the sensory stimulus appears on the surface of the pineal gland. So here we see the homunculus fallacy coming into play. He's saying, okay, so uh, let's say you hear something, then the nerves in the ear pull, uh, pull at the the vent, you know, at the end of the nerves and the ventricles, and it kind of creates a suction. And this suction of the 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 animal spirit surrounding the pineal gland then creates like a little rise in the pineal gland, and the pineal glands feeling these bumps on its exterior, but then how does the pineal gland interpret that? Like we have the homunculus fallacy coming into play. Okay. <clears throat> these parts then begin to pull in the small fibers and the nerves with the result that the valves which these fibers are connected are pulled open. Some of the animal spirits in the pressurized ventricles of the brain escape. And because nature abhors a vacuum, a low pressure image of the sensory stimulus appears on the surface of the pineal gland. It is this image which then causes sensory perception of whiteness, tickling, pain, and so on. Quote, it is not the figures imprinted on the external sense organs or on the internal surface of the brain, which should be taken to be ideas, but only that those which are traced in the spirits on the surface of the gland H where the seed of the imagination and the common sense is located. That's the pineal gland. That is to say, it is only the latter figures which should be taken to be forms or images which the rational soul unite to this machine will consider directly when it imagines some object or perceives it by the senses. It is to be noted that the reference to the rational soul is a bit premature at this stage of Descartes' story because he had announced that he would, to begin with, discuss only the function, functions of bodies without souls. Okay, so. So Descartes is not keeping this all straight. 
Imagination arises in the same way as perception, except that it's not caused by external objects. Uh, continuing the just quoted passage, Descartes, Descartes wrote, and note that I say images or perceives by the senses, imagines or perceives by the senses. For I wish to apply the term idea generally to all the impressions with this, which the spirits can receive as they leave gland age. These are to be attributed to the common sense when they depend on the presence of objects, but they may also perceive from many other causes, as I shall explain later, and they should then be attributed to the imagination. Uh, this common sense now, uh, it, this, this idea of common sense, we, we say, well, it's common sense. It's what everybody commonly believes. But what he's meaning by common sense is that the pineal gland somehow senses vision and sound and taste and touch um, through a common sense that all those things that we separate as we think of as separate senses are somehow uh, sensed in a common way and in a common position in the pineal gland. Um, and so that's what he means by common sense. All these, these various perceptions are really reducible to some uh, common type of sense perception that's very different from what we might think. Descartes' materialistic interpretation of the term idea in this context is striking, but this is not the only sense in which he used this term. When he was talking about real men instead of mechanical models of their bodies, he also referred to ideas of the pure mind, which do not involve the corporal imagination. Okay, so Descartes has some gaps, okay. Descartes' mechanical explanation of memory uh, was as follows. The pores or gaps lying between the tiny fibers of the substance of the brain may become wider as a result of the flow of animal spirits through them. This changes the pattern in which the spirits will later flow through the brain. And in this way, figures may be pre uh, preserved in such a way that the ideas which were previously on the gland can be formed again long afterwards without requiring the presence of the objects to which they correspond. And this is what memory consists in. Okay, uh, so objects out in the world go through the eye, for example, and that pulls on the ventricles and that creates this common sense on the surface of the pineal gland. And then the pineal gland somehow has within itself the ability to reproduce that effect, and that's memory. Uh, it's all, you know, it's, he's obviously trying to work this out, see what is possible, but it's a lot of speculation. Finally, Descartes presented an account of the origin of bodily movements. He thought that there are two types of bodily movements. First, there are movements which are caused by movements of the pineal gland. The pineal gland may be moved in three ways. One, by the force of the soul, provided that there is a soul in the machine. Two, by the spirits randomly swirling about in the ventricles. And three, as a result of stimulation of the sense organs. Okay, so there's three causes of motion in the body. From the soul, from the animal spirits swirling about randomly, and from an external stimulus. The role of the pineal gland is similar in all three cases. As a result of its movement, it may come close to some of the valves in the walls of the ventricles. The spirits which continuously flow from it may then push these valves open with the result that some of the animal spirits in the pressurized ventricles can escape through these valves, flow to the muscles by means of the hollow spirit-filled nerves, open or close certain valves in the muscles which control the tension in those muscles and thus bring about contraction or relax re relaxation of the muscles. As in perception, Descartes supplied the term idea again to the flow of animal spirits from the pineal gland. 
quote, and note that if we have an idea about moving a member, that idea consisting of nothing but the way in which the spirits flow from the gland is the cause of the movement itself. So he's, he's so sure about this stuff. <laughs> Um, as part of the just mentioned type of bodily motions caused by motions of the pineal gland, there's also a second kind, namely reflexes. The pineal gland plays no role in respect to them. Reflexes, reflexes are caused by direct exchanges of animal spirits between channels within the hemispheres of the brain. Descartes did not know that there are uh, spinal reflexes. They do not necessarily give rise to ideas in the sense of currents in the ventricles and are not brought about by motions of the pineal gland. Okay, so reflexes don't involve the pineal gland, but volitional acts or when we perceive something that does involve the pineal gland. All right. So I'll stop this video here and pick up that reading in the